Okay, so um, <clears throat> in the interest of time, um, I am um, going to give us an overview of what Wiki Project Medicine did this last year. So a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a small town. I'm a small town emergency room physician. Uh, I live in this great big country we see up on the screen there, called Canada, um, in the corner of this great big province called British Columbia. Um, I work in the emergency department there. I have some small. I have some academic affiliations. Uh, I teach. I'm a clinical instructor at the University of British Columbia, but it's a long way from from where I live, about 800 kilometers from where I live. I became involved in Wikipedia back in 2008. I was working a night shift in the emergency department. I was looking around the internet, and I came across this horribly written article, an article full of errors, and I thought, oh my god, this is really bad. And then I saw an edit button, and I realized that I could fix the internet, and I've sort of been hooked ever since. So. A quick overview of what we've done this year and some stuff I'm going to speak about today. I'm going to talk about some stats. I'm going to speak about the new medical app here we launched in collaboration with Wikimedia CH. I'm going to speak about one of my favorite projects, which is our translation effort. I'm going to speak about our work with the University of California, San Francisco, some stuff we're doing with respect to med medical videos, um, some successes we've had with respect to licensing, and a number of other collaborations. So first, to look at some stats. Um, we, within Wiki Project Medicine, keep a fairly good eye on how much content we have, how this content has been growing, how much readership um, Wikipedia's medical content has been getting. If you look at our article numbers, back in 2013, we had about 155,000 medical articles across 255 languages. This has grown by about 18% over the last two years to uh, 180. 4,000 um, articles across 275 languages. So uh, quite reassuring numbers, even though you know, our editing community hasn't increased that much, we're still seeing significant increases in the amount of content we're providing. With respect to page views, the last page view data we have for, for Wiki Project Medicines from, from 2013, if you look at all medical articles across all languages, if you take into account both desktop and, um, and uh, mobile views, our medical content got about 6.5 billion page views in 2013. Um, we did a, uh, Andrew West and I did an analysis, a comparison of Wikipedia's readership um, uh, of medical content versus other sources of medical content on the internet. And it does look like Wikipedia is the single most used medical resource online. With respect to community health, uh, our editor numbers have decreased over the years. Um, you know, Wikipedia sort of peaked in, in 2007, 2008, depending on the language you look at. And one of the encouraging trends we've seen over the last couple of years is there's been a slight increase in the size of our core community. So back in 2013, there was about there was 274 editors who made more than 250 edits to medical articles on Wikipedia in that year. If we look at 2015, this number has increased slightly to 318, um, who have made more than 250 edits. So we are seeing an encouraging trend, finally, of an increase in, in editor numbers. These numbers, however, are still small. And on English Wikipedia, if you compare the activity of um, the medical project to the other projects out there, Wikipedia is somewhere between second to third most popular um, uh, wiki project out there. Wikipedia Military History and Wikipedia Women in Red have slightly more, uh, slightly greater activity. Here's a graph looking at the. Um, here's a graph looking at uh, the change in our core editing community over time. We see that our core editing community based on our data, peaked in 2009. It dipped until 2013. And now we've seen a bit of a bump here in the last couple of years. Another way to look at the improvement of Wikipedia's medical content is to look at the number of references supporting our content. And here we see another very encouraging trend. We, we see that you know back in 2009, uh, Wikipedia's medical content across all languages was supported by less than 400,000 references. And now, today in 2015, our content has nearly 1.5 million references supporting it. So reference, you know, not only has the number of references increased, but the density of references um, uh, has increased. 
Next, I want to speak about our work on the app. Um, we built an offline Wikipedia app in 2016, 2015, 2016. Uh, this was built in collaboration with Wikimedia CH. And basically what it is, is we've taken uh, all English Wikipedia's anatomy, medication, um, healthcare, and sanitation articles. We've packaged them into ZIM files. We've put them to, inside a, um, an app that one can simply download from the App Store, and then if you have an extra gig on your phone, you will have all of this content available when you have no access to the internet. There are, um, um, we have about 10,000 downloads of this content as of today. We've seen a significant increase in the frequency of people downloading it over the last couple of weeks, which is exciting. And we have Zims in other languages, but we haven't package them together as apps yet. We're hoping that over the next couple of months, we're going to come up with similar apps in French, Spanish, Chinese, um, Persian, and Hindi. So with respect to the app, it's being well ranked uh, on the Google Play Store. We have placed a banner promoting the app on a few Wikipedia articles. Um, uh, this is what, the, this is what the, uh, the banner looks like as we see up at the top. We're basically letting our, our desktop readers, our mobile readers know that there is the option to download this content in an offline format uh, for later use. And surprisingly, we haven't had any issues with the three banners that we have placed. Looking at the effectiveness of, of this banner promoting this app, we have seen uh, that the percentage of, page, uh, of, of downloads of the app from um, third parties, which Wikipedia would be one for the Google Play Store, has increased from 5% to uh, about 10%. And the feedback we have received from those who are using the app has been excellent. Um, people have called it brilliant. Um, you know, uh, they see it as one way that we can serve humanity. Here's a look at the, 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 the number of downloads and how that's changed over time. Uh, the blue dot we see up in the right corner, that's when we put the banners on Wikipedia, and we've seen that the growth has continued to accelerate since those banners have been placed. And one of the most exciting things about this project is that those who are using this material are not our typical Wikipedia users. We know that 70% of people who are using um, uh, Wikipedia are from the global north. Only 25% of people who are using Wikipedia are from the global south. Um, but the app is the exact opposite. Um, the number one, uh, you know, the, the most frequent country people are from who are downloading this app is India at 20%, followed by Pakistan at 9%. And the United States comes in third. This is quite different compared to most healthcare apps. Most healthcare apps are primarily downloaded by people in the United States. And this, of course, is, is very different from English Wikipedia generally, where we know that 43% of our readers of English Wikipedia are from the United States. So um, this app is able to reach um, a, a group of users that our other content, our online content, is not. The next project I'm going to speak about is our medical translation project. So this is something we started back in 2011-2012 um, in, in partnership with a number of or other organizations. It started as a partnership between Wiki Project Medicine and our first partner, Translators Without Borders. Translators Without Borders is, is um, sort of a volunteer organization like us. They basically have this group of uh, three to 5,000 volunteer translators who are interested in and willing to translate uh, material for free for people who come from NGOs and other idealistic movements. So we, have, we initially started by taking, you know, improving English Wikipedia articles, um, uh, improving the full article, bringing it through English Wikipedia's peer review process, through good article, through featured article. These articles were typically two to 10,000 words in length. And we were working to translate these articles into languages like Swahili and Dutch and German and French. And we, realized that, well, this was suitable content for some of our large languages. It was way too much content for languages like Swahili. It was way too detailed, um, and the community wasn't able to take care of, take ownership of this content once it's translated. So 
we realized that wasn't an ideal way to work, and we switched our strategy from translating full articles to translating just short articles. So basically what we're doing is we're working to improve the leads of the English Wikipedia article so that they're well-referenced, so that they summarize the, the disease, condition, or medication in question, um, basically in three to four paragraphs. And we're just recommending that people translate those three to four paragraphs into their target language. Our goal is to basically create 1,000 um, short overview articles in English. We currently have 348 of them ready for translation. And over the last few years, we've worked in more than 100 languages, and we have translated more than 5 million words of text. Here's an example of one of those short articles. Here's our article on rabies. Um, what you see is you see it's four paragraphs in length. Um, we've been organizing them in a fairly, uh, a fairly consistent structure. So the first paragraph deals with the definition and symptoms. The second paragraph deals with causes. The third paragraph deals with treatment. And then the final paragraph deals with epidemiology. So why is this needed? Well, we know that every day thousands die because of the lack of access to health care. And an important factor in this lack of health care is just a lack of access to health care information. Um, more than half of people, for example, from Africa said that a friend or family member could have been saved if it had information in their own language. We know that just having content in English is a big barrier to people's understanding of, of important issues. And even in my own country, you know, um, I work as an emergency physician, as I said. I get mothers who bring their sick children into the emergency department. And it's not that unfrequent that you know a mother brings in a child the, the child has nausea vomiting and diarrhea i'm asking the you know the mom how you know how's the child drinking and the mom replies well every time i give my child something to drink they throw up so i've stopped giving my child anything to drink and you know that of course is not the correct answer and if you live in you know a wealthy country and you have easy access to health care you know you can figure out that that's not the right answer but in many parts of the world it's difficult to figure that out. So the issue is that little healthcare content exists in most languages. We're working to try to change that. One of the big successes we had here back in 2014, of course, everybody's aware of the big Ebola outbreak that occurred in West Africa. Um, in the beginning parts of that outbreak, we worked to develop our content on Ebola in English. We then worked with our partners at Translators the Borders and Rubric, and we helped get this content into 115 languages on Wikipedia. And then this content proceeded to be read about 100 million times in 2014. Um, and, you know, we didn't really know where this information was being read. Of course, you know, no cases really spread in the United States. We obviously, many people in the United States read this information, but it wasn't as important for people in the United States as it would be for people in the, these four countries that were affected. Now, we at the Wikimedia Foundation, at Wikipedia, we collect very little information about who our readers are, where our readers are from. But I met this gentleman at um, a conference who was from Microsoft. And Microsoft collects everything about everyone. And I was like, I have this question, you know, do you know is, how frequently is Wikipedia used in the countries of Mali, Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia? And he said, that's an easy question to answer. And a few days later, he sent me the chart of which websites were the top used websites in each of these four countries. And it turns out that Wikipedia in English was the most used website in Mali, Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. Second was CNN, followed by the CDC, followed by the World Health Organization. So, <clears throat> in working on just the leads of the English article, um, he, uh, he looked at mobile readership, and he looked at, of all the people who look at an article, of course, everybody's gonna look at the first section. How many people open subsequent sections on mobile after the first? And the answer is only 40% of individuals ever look at anything beyond the lead. So if you're a Wikipedian, you know, I, th I think the take home message for me was make sure the leads of the topics of the articles in the subject area you care about are well written. Um, and of course, we're now working, you know, I've spent my last two years just working on the leads of our, main, of our medical articles primarily, partly because of, of, of this realization. 
Another initiative we did this year was our vaccines campaign. Uh, what we did, there's 23 vaccines that are on the World Health Organization's uh, essential medicines list. And we worked in the early part of 2016 to bring each of these 23 articles to high quality. And then we're um, promoting the translation of these 23 articles into as many other languages as possible. Um, we've done all of them into more than eight languages at this point in time. And our next campaign that we're going to be working on the, in uh, a little bit later this year is we're working on launching uh, a translation campaign for women's health uh, topics. And <clears throat> with respect to the vaccines, in late December, um, um, we basically took all the vaccine articles before I'd gone through and, and you know, sort of improved them before translation. And I looked at, at how they ranked on Google. And their Google page rank was about four, i.e., or they, they came in about fourth position on average on Google when you search for that term specifically. And then after I improved the articles, I looked back in June of 2016, and the average rank of these 23 articles had improved on Google. So the take-home message is, if we make Wikipedia better, Wikipedia will go higher in Google results, um, which will increase our readership. Interestingly, if you search for these 20 uh, vaccines uh, from India, so google.co.in, they rank even higher than they do for um, google.com. And one of the big successes is we translated all three, 23 of these articles into um, uh, Odia. We have an amazing volunteer, a retired physician um, from the Odia community. Odia is spoken by, by 23 million, or 35 million individuals, I mean. And he went ahead and he's been translating hundreds of medical articles into his own language. And he translated these 23 articles, and I took the names in Aria and I popped them into google.com, and I popped them into Google India, and they were the first hit for every one of those search terms. And actually, for a bunch of the search, search terms, this was the only content to exist in this language spoken by 35 million people, which sort of made me take a step back. You know, here we are, those of us who speak English, we take the internet for granted. We, we take it for granted that when we go to the internet, there'll be content in a language that we understand. Those in Europe, similarly. Um, thank you. Um, just one more minute. <clears throat> um, but this isn't true for many languages. And you know, one of the exciting things about this project is that we're generating some of the first content that ever exists in this language. And then finally, to finish up, um, next we looked at, so yeah, we have content in ARIA, but does, is anybody coming and reading this content? And of course, you know, if you have a language where there's content or where there's no content, you wouldn't even bother with the internet if that's the only language you know. But what we see is we saw that, you know, these articles were mostly all translated in January. There was 123 views for these 23 articles in that language in January. Um, it increased to 164 in February. And then we saw it double in April. We saw it double again in May. And we saw that in June, these 23 articles were getting 933 page views. It's not a huge amount, but the exciting trend is that we're seeing the amount of page views of this content in Aria is increasing. Basically, if we build it, they will come. I think I'm out of time, unfortunately. Is that correct? Am I out of time? Who's speaking next? Oh, there's a break. Do people mind if I continue? OK, OK, thank you, thank you. So um, <clears throat> a few other aspects of our translation project. Uh, you know, so the translation project is based within Wiki Project Med Foundation, but we're working with a number of amazing collaborators. Uh, we're working with a number of other sister uh, uh, organizations, including Wikimedia Taiwan. Uh, one of our great successes, uh, we started back in the fall of 2014. Wikimedia Taiwan, um, and, and Leong is sitting up here in front, who is uh, spearheading this entire effort. Um, he, uh, he formed partnerships with the National Taiwan University College of Medicine. Leong is not a physician himself, but he's just an extrovert who is willing to go out and, and, uh, and meet with people. And he is sort of, you know, many people are, are hesitant to, to get involved with Wikipedia because they worry about the complexity of editing Wikipedia, the social norms, and the technical aspects. So basically, we have non-medical people taking care of the technical aspects. Well, they collaborate with, with a medical organization to take care of the translation. And 
Wikimedia uh, Taiwan in collaboration with the National Taiwan University uh, using a combination of Facebook and Hackpad and a bunch of students and a few of their professors have translated more than 50 of these short articles into Chinese in a very short period of time. Some of the feedback from the students, the students in Taiwan have found this to be a very useful learning activity. Uh, one of them came out and stated, participating in this pro uh, project changed my perspective on knowledge. So in much of the world, medical students learn medicine in English. So if you go to a university in Taiwan, your textbooks are often in English, you're learning in English. And then when you finish medical school, all of a sudden you need to start treating people in a different language. And you know, students often don't get the skills during their medical training to learn how to translate, con you know, translate the information from English wh when they learn it into the language they're gonna be treating in. So I think we can really sell these sorts of projects to medical schools uh, in different areas um, and really help create uh, better doctors in these countries um, by teaching them how to translate medical content from the language they learn it in into their own language. Here is one of our language champions, as I was mentioning, um, uh, Dr. Sh uh, Sandra Root. He's, this is the only language in which all the available articles have been translated. Um, it is ARIA, and it was one single individual, one language champion has basically, he trans translates like, uh, probably half a dozen a week. Since last Wikimania, um, we've we have about 1,000 more of these short articles translated. 200 of them are on vaccines. Um, we've done all of them in Burmese, Malay, Oriya, Persian, Romanian, and Lithuanian. And here is sort of the growth of our project over time. Um, we started back, as I said, in 2011, and we've seen quite an ex exponential rise in the frequency that, you know, as the, as the project grows, we're able to translate articles more quickly. And then finally, the last thing I want to touch on before, before we close is one more partnership. This is a partnership between um, Wiki Project Med Foundation and the University of California, San Francisco. Uh, and basically, since 2013, UCSF has been offering electives. So basically, when you're a medical student, when you get to your final year and a half of medical school in the United States, you can do, you can sort of pick what subjects you want to do. You can do like four weeks in dermatology, you can do two weeks in neurosurgery, and now at UCSF you can do four weeks in Wikipedia. And basically you're given academic credit, four weeks of academic credit to spend that duration of time working to improve Wikipedia's medical content. Uh, we're co-supporting this uh, with the WikiEdits Foundation. Um, we had seven medical students go through this process, uh, this most recent round, and we've begun having some pharmacy students begun doing, um, you know, they saw the success that, and, and, the, and that the medical uh, trend, or the medical uh, effort was having, and they've begun bringing their students to Wikipedia as well. Here's a look at the number of students who've gone through this elective over time. Um, we've had almost 50 students go through this. Um, yeah, so I, th I think I'll, I'll, I'll stop for questions there as, um, we're out of time. And um, Lucas, are you here? Lucas? So, so one thing we've done to help support our translation effort is um, we have two coordinators of this project. One is Carl. Carl, you want to stand up for us? Um, and the other, one, the other one is Lucas. So, so we have these two people who are helping coordinate this effort. And they take care of a lot of the technical um, um, backloads. So you know, what we really need is we need more. Um, so what we have is we have translators. We have some coordination systems. But we need Wikipedians from target languages who are interested in this work to reach out to us and tell us, you know, we have this list of almost 400 articles that are of high quality, that are short, that are simple, that are ready to be translated into other languages. And we just need to know which languages other language, which articles other languages need. So if you speak, um, you know, Hindi, and you say, you know, we don't have an article on dengue fever in Hindi, would, you know, can you translate that article for me, and then I will take care of, once you have that translation done, I will take care of adding it to my Wikipedia. That's sort of the help that we need. So if any of you are interested in helping, feel free to reach out to myself, feel free to reach out to Carl, and feel free to reach out to Lucas. Yes?
given that a lot of the original articles will be quite dynamic, the new developments, uh, what are you doing to make sure that the translations keep pace with the original articles? And indeed, if the, you know, if there's, say, research in India, which is put in the Hindi article, to make sure that that feeds back into the original. So, um, you know, one of the successes we had in this was with our, our article on, on HIV AIDS. Um, you know, we wrote the article, uh, a, a couple of us wrote the article on HIV AIDS in English a couple of years back. We had it translated by Transit Borders from English into Persian. The Persian community took that article and they added it to the Persian Wikipedia. And then what they did is they added an entire section on HIV AIDS specifically in Iran. So of course the English article didn't have any sections on HIV AIDS in Iran, but the Persian version definitely should. So they sort of localized that content to their language environment. Now, with respect to your question about how are we going to keep this content updated, medicine actually moves more slowly than most people believe. You know, the media makes it sound like there's new brilliant medical um, um, breakthroughs every day. That's simply not the case. Um, you know, you look at the treatment of gout, the treatment of gout has been the same for 40 years, um, for 99% of people. Um, you know, some diseases are advancing more quickly, such as hepatitis C. You know, we have a lot of great new treatments for hepatitis C, but still their rollout is very slow. You know, those new treatments aren't applicable to much of the world because they're $100,000 a dose, and most countries, you just simply don't have them available. So it often takes 10 years for the newest breakthroughs to even make its way to the developing world to many of these languages. Um, with respect to how do we get feedback from India, how do we get feedback from, from Sweden, how do we get feedback from Chinese to English language uh, Wikipedia, it's interesting. I, I gave a talk here in Italy in Milan a couple of years back at a Cochrane uh, symposium, and I pulled the audience, I said, you know, is an audience full of researchers? And I said, who here publishes in English? And everybody's hand went up. And then I asked, who here publishes in Italian? And it was an entire Italian audience, and 70% of the hands went down. So most likely, if you're a physician in a non-English country, you're still publishing in English. So even your, you know, if, if you're Swedish, your best researchers are often publishing in English. We'll bring you a microphone. Uh, are you aware of any efforts to record this stuff in audio form uh, to extend its reach even further? Yeah, exactly. So there's, there, there's a spoken Wikipedia project. Um, uh, there, is, there is a gentleman from uh, India who's now in New York by the name of Abhishek who has been working on spoken Wikipedia to some extent. Um, I would love to see these turn into audio recordings. Um, if there's people interested in doing that work, there's a small community working on it, but I'm sure they'd, be loved, they'd love to have more people join them. There's some effort, but it's still a small effort. There's uh, the gentleman in the, in the black hat. Uh, there's one, yeah, we'll grab the one in the black hat and then. Do we have a statistic about um, content on uh, Ayurvedic uh, uh, medical stuff uh, versus more uh, uh, occidental uh, practices? Uh, as you said, that there are many uh, Indic. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, with respect to English Wiki uh, Project Medicine, you know, the sources we're really basing this on are, we, we try to use international sources like Cochrane, we try to use international sources like the World Health Organization, um, and we basically, you know, we're just trying to summarize the best available evidence within that community, um, and, you know, we're more concentrating on the recommendations of the World Health Organization, stuff you find in Lancet, the BMJ, JAMA, so these major recognized sources of medical information. We don't touch much on alternative medicine, as typically alternative medicine is not very uh, well, well dealt with or, or not covered because, you know, the lack of the evidence base for much of it. Carl? Uh, yeah, um, just listening to your talk, I, uh, 
there's been a, a thought that I thought I wanted to lift to the community as well as to you concerning both referencing and uh, the amount of medical editor we have. If uh, it isn't so that in uh, just due to the way that we have higher reference uh, uh, requirements that the uh, amount of medical editors naturally uh, drops. So I mean, I don't necessarily always think it's a negative fact that it's dropped. We would of course really want to see it rising uh, continuously, but I'm not entirely convinced it's purely negative. So, um, you know, with respect to our decline in editors, you know, we're, we weren't exactly sure why our editor pool declined in the first place. I have a few hypotheses. You know, one, I think some of our editor decline could be because the easy stuff on Wikipedia is written. You know, back in the old, you know, back in 2006, 2005, one could come to Wikipedia, one could find a lot of missing content on common knowledge topics and just add whatever was in your head. Now that Wikipedias are getting better and better, it's becoming harder and harder to uh, improve Wikipedia. And I think to take, you know, as our content's okay, to take it to the next level, we really do need to engage, you know, more professional organizations, more like-minded um, 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 research organizations to bring Wikipedia to the next level. So, um, yeah, and I, I think the other one of the other big reasons why uh, you know our editors have have plateaued or declined is that you know when Wikipedia started, we were the only Web 2.0 website out there. Now there's hundreds of websites people can contribute to. You can write a blog. You can be narcissistic and write about yourself on Facebook. Um, you know, there's so many activities for physicians, for others, and the competition for us at Wikipedia is much greater. Yes. Okay, last question. So uh, besides Ebola, uh, are there any other uh, diseases that you've uh, sort of prioritized um, uh, which uh, disease and which language to target based on you know, incidents and local locales? Yeah, you know, so so, so the question about Ebola is an interesting one. So, you know, if you look at the number of people who died from Ebola in its entire history, it's about, four, it's about 14,000. If we look at the number of people who die from rabies every single year, it's 25,000. If you look at the number of people who die from HIV AIDS, it's 10 times greater than that. Diarrhea, 100 times greater than that. So, um, you know, we partly did Ebola as it made, you know, us as a movement look good. But with respect to major health impact, there are many diseases more important than that. And you know, we are, we are prioritizing tuberculosis, malaria, um, diarrhea, gastroenteritis. You know, we're, 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 we really are prioritizing the diseases that have the greatest impact on humanity. So uh, now, are we specifically prioritizing diseases by language um, and taking into account what diseases are most prevalent in that language area? I would love more partners who are in those areas of the world to come to us and say, you know, leishmaniasis is common in my country. Please translate the leishmaniasis article first. That's sort of the feedback that, that we need. We need more collaborators to, 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 to help us expand. We need to be directed by, by those who actually speak um, um, and work within that language community. We need more people, exactly. So. I, I have a quick question here. Um, yeah. I know that this is a problem for Wikipedia itself, but specifically for uh, Wiki Project Med, how do you tackle or how do you address the lack of trust in the content from specifically the medical community or physicians that challenge the information that's there? So with respect to people's trust in Wikipedia, there was a, there was an interesting survey done in London, and they basically had surveyors walk around the streets of London asking the general population, how much do you trust these different sources of information? And the most encouraging thing was from, this, from this survey was, you know, they asked people, how much do you trust the sun and the mirror, which sell like three to six million copies a day, and trust was about 15%. And then they asked people, how much do you trust Wikipedia, and how much do you trust the BBC? And trust in Wikipedia was 68%, and trust in the BBC was 66%. So there is a remarkably high trust in Wikipedia among um, the general population. Now, with respect to 
the health, physician in the healthcare community, they've done surveys of physicians, and they've done surveys of medical students, and they've looked at the frequency of use of Wikipedia's medical content by the medical community, and it's somewhere between 50 and 100%. Um, one survey of medical students found that 94% of medical students are using Wikipedia, and it's their single most frequently used source. So yes, we hear people say, I, you know, I don't trust Wikipedia, it's crap, but they're still using it. Um, so, you know, they say one thing, but they do another. And, and I think, you know, their actions speak louder than their words, and we can simply, you know, we do know, you know, I don't go around trying to convince people to use Wikipedia, I go around trying to convince my colleagues to edit Wikipedia. And that's how I always start. I, I, like, I know Wikipedia's medical content has issues. Um, you know, I've read a great deal of it. I know all the mistakes that we have. I know that it needs to be improved tremendously. And that's why I feel strongly that we need to bring in the rest of the medical community to improve it. Because right now, you know, there's parts of Wikipedia that are a public health threat. Uh, there's, but the majority of Wikipedia, I think, you know, is, is overall beneficial. And people are using it whether we like it or not. So you can either go around and try to convince people not to use Wikipedia, and that's not very successful and a waste of time. Um, there's some people who do that. I prefer going around trying to convince people to fix Wikipedia, and then you know when I fail to convince enough people, I just work on trying to fix it myself. Hmm. Hmm?